that there are things that have been happening uh, of the recent past that uh, seem to be extraordinary in terms of how they manifest and what happens thereafter when comprising the body of Christ, I mean believers in the church. And uh, we saw somewhere last year when the fire came down from heaven at the mountain of fire, Keancha. And uh, since then, we have seen you taking steps that are prophetic and the manifestations have been very high. And uh, in the recent past, we saw you building a new altar. And uh, we had an altar offering that was presented on that new altar. And we saw some resistance at a very big magnitude when people were placing their offering on the altar. And, uh, but thereafter, we again saw the devil being defeated. This thing requires a deeper explanation to us so that we may be able to understand what exactly is taking place. Kindly, will you be able to explain to us so we may understand? I have no idea whether there is anybody that exists on earth who can explain God fully. Yes. There are several things that God has done uh, to us as a church. Yes. yes. Beginning from the time the ministry was established, uh -huh. I have witnessed uh, uh, several people getting healed. Yes. As you have seen on the videos and as pr probably uh, it will be played. Yeah. And uh, it has not been very easy even for us to comprehend fully yes. who God is. <laughs> And uh, to me, when I see such happenings, I simply say, God remains to be God. Amen. And we remain to be his children. Uh -huh. There are things that God has done that sometimes it becomes difficult to believe. Yes. But what else can you do other than believing? Uh -huh. <laughs> because it has happened. Yes. Uh, what happened uh, at Kehanja? Yes was not anticipated at all. Uh -huh. We went to pray, and uh, suddenly that fire came. Yes. As, uh, as you can see, as it's being played, it came, and uh, no one can explain, because that was, we were not closer to any home at yes. all. It was far. Yes. And, uh, that is deep in the forest where we had acquired land to, to build a mountain of prayer. Yeah. I have all my years as a theologian never thought that God can once again, like the days of Moses, yes. bring down fire, like the days of Elijah, you yes. know. But it happened. It happened. If you ask me to explain exactly what happened, <laughs> I cannot tell you. Uh -huh. Because I equally depend on God to understand. Uh -huh. I know why he did that, because he told me. But how it happened, uh -huh. I can't explain. Because yes. the fire came. Yes. And uh, it was burning. It was not consuming anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's right in, inside the uh, uh, grass. Yes. But the grass is not consuming. And the fire kept on burning for over 10 minutes. Yes. And uh, as we kept praying, the fire kept increasing. increasing. When we stopped praying and went to view <laughs> the fire, so the fire uh, died off. Yes. Therefore, you, you cannot really explain. But the things which have followed that fire, yes. God speaking to us regularly concerning our nation, concerning our nation, other nations, yes. even concerning the mountain of prayer. Yes and concerning revival. Uh -huh. Those things have confirmed that that was the presence of God. Uh -huh. God decided to demonstrate his power physically mm -hmm. by his own grace and for his own reasons. Yes. I cannot really say that he does that to every minister. And even if he decided to do it, we have nothing to object. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our duty is to believe. Yes. It is very difficult for us to to try to explain God using our human language. Yes. Because God manifests himself differently. Yes. But all I can say, that is how God appeared to us. Uh -huh. And many of us that were there that day heard the voice of God. Yes. We got a, a, an explanation of what God did. Mm -hmm. 
You see, pastors, what happened there after his, uh, this year? Yeah. Yes. God sent me to go to the same mountain of prayer. Yes. To pick 12 stones uh-huh. to come and uh, build for him an altar. Uh-huh. And he was insisting that this is the altar that is going to bring down the devil, yes. the powers of witchcraft, yes. diseases, through giving of sacrifices yes. and offerings. Mm-hmm. This is something I have no theological packing. Uh-huh. I have only spiritual understanding, and that's how I present it. <laughs> yes. I have not had a very clear theological revelation about it, uh-huh. but I have a revelation about the intention of God. Yes. You see, I went to Keanja. I picked those stones yes. and I brought them to our main sanctuary here at the headquarters. Uh-huh. You saw me, I've been building this altar. We discussed yeah. about it. Yes. I built this altar for the glory of God. Amen. And uh, this altar is supposed to receive offerings from all over the world. You know, the reasons why God was telling me to build this altar in this way that it must be an altar that no human being will step on. Uh-huh. It is only the offering that will step on mm. that altar. Uh-huh. So that is why I made it. Yes. yes. As you can see behind me here. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then he, he told me to, to place the 12 stones on top of it yes. to represent the 12 months of every year. Uh-huh. So this altar is here for the nations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the generations to come, yes. even it will exist beyond our generation, uh-huh. and it will be responding and answering. Yes, you see, like uh, like what is written in uh, Revelation chapter sixteen and verse seven. Yes, it says, "I had the altar respond." Uh-huh. Nick, yes, it was <laughs> speaking. Yes. yes, this will be speaking. Amen. For the people of Kisi, for the people of Kenya. For the people of East Africa, Amen. for the people of Africa, mm-hmm. and for the group, everyone all over the world, Amen. who will be connected to this altar by the Spirit, uh-huh. a lot will happen to you. Yes. Because, you, you know, pastors, what God told me is that this altar will be an altar of life yes. uh-huh. and prosperity. Yes. Amen. That means people will enjoy divine Earth, uh-huh. and they will enjoy divine prosperity wow. that includes divine protection. Amen. Amen. So, for the nations, they are welcome. Yes. Amen. They are welcome at the right time uh, to give an offering. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned about resistance. Yes. That occurred when people were bringing the offering. Yes. Mm-hmm. As you can see on those videos which are running. Yeah. You will definitely know that the devil doesn't want people to give. Uh-huh. It's not an easy way. Uondoka kwa mikono ya shetani na uondoe familia yenu na uondoe utajiri wako wakati mwingine Isa ataka unajua kwa nini inakuwa struggle? Ni kwa sababu it's not our normal practice. Asa shetani ametosa ataka nyingi kuhusu maisha yetu. Tunangangana kurudisha kidogo. We are working. Yes, you are making it. You are making it. You are making it. Weka tu. Weka matabau ni yenu na moto huo usiogope. Usiogope kitu unaona. Lazima kungekuwa na moto. Hao wengine wanaona madhabahu. Wewe weka. Inateketezwa. What? Eh, hey, you is the glory of God. Yes. Wape makofu. Unajua wewe unaona madhabahu. Unaona mawe. Lakini hapa ile moto inateketeza hizo daka utaogopa. Yes. Yes. Yes, 
Amen. Glory. Glory. Yes. Weka hiyo. Linda hiyo mikono kabisa. Shikilia mkono tu. Weka tu. Leta nikuweke. Leta leta leta. Leta nimweke hiyo tu nangangana. Ah, weka. Goja unataka nini? Wewe. Bona. Unataka nini? Acha no, acha no. Ha? Mimi nilichoma lakini nalichoma vibaya sana. Anasema yeye ndiye alichoma lakini namchoma. Weka yeye ya mwisho. We must finish this up. Wacha na wacha na wacha na. Wacha na wacha na. Siwezi weka. Weka hiyo. Weka ya mwisho hiyo. Nilichoma. Nilichoma zaidi. Unajua ile moto iko hapa. Ah, waja niwekea mse mimi ndio sichomeki ndio hiyo. Ah. Ah. Weka weka mse. Najua mambo mengine unafikiria ni utoto mzee kama huyo hii miaka yote amefanya Kenyata Kenyata na Sana Hospital anaweza kuja hapa kupractice this ndio hiyo pona na familia yako haya unaona watu kama hawa amefanya kwenye mazingira makubwa ya hospitali kubwa akifanya mambo kama haya usifikiri ni kitu ili ya guess work hapa kuna power many people think that they are not giving on the altar because of their own mm-hmm. there is nobody who bargains or opposes giving to the devil whenever they go to magicians. Uh-huh. <laughs> you obey. <laughs> but yes. every time it comes to the altar of God. Yes. Sometimes people miss money. Uh-huh. Other times people don't see the need to give. Yes. Other times people people feel like they are manipulated. Uh-huh. Others feel like they are being conned. Mm-hmm. Others feel like they are being brainwashed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whenever it comes to God because the devil has successfully managed uh-huh. to convince people that giving in the altar of God is wrong uh-huh. but giving on his altars is right <laughs> so that he can have a upper hand yes. in destroying their lives. Uh-huh. That's why you witnessed even you when you were giving. Yes, I remember. The resistance was high. Uh-huh. I saw the way my pastors were being resisted. Yes. As it can be seen on these videos. Mm-hmm. Resistance was high. Yeah. Because the devil doesn't want you to be successful an entire year. Yes. He could wish you to be successful March, April, and May, but you live for him the rest of the month. <laughs> so when you are you what you are doing yes. is that you are completing the cycle uh-huh. by telling the devil that every month of this year mm-hmm. belongs to me and to my God yes. and to my altar. Uh-huh. That is why there was that resistance. You know, this is a question of altars. Yes. yes. Altars resist one another. Uh-huh. If you are a believer and you are before an altar which is not powerful, uh-huh. the altars of the devil and the witches and the wizards mm-hmm. will definitely overpower you. Uh-huh. But if you worship in a place where the altar has been sanctified, yes. uh-huh. and it is pure, uh-huh. and it is powerful, uh-huh. the devil knows that any offering you give there will definitely destroy his power. Uh-huh. So the offerings you people presented here and the ones which you'll be presenting on this altar yes. will always be powerful against the altars of witchcraft, uh-huh. the altars of disease, Amen. the altars of uh, poverty. Yes. We have entered into a realm of prosperity. We will enjoy prosperity. Hallelujah. We will enjoy prosperity. We will enjoy divine healthy. Uh-huh. These things I'm sure because our altar is powerful. And actually in the spiritual realm, yes. it is far above My goodness. any altar you can think mm. or imagine. Amen. The devil is aware. Believers are not, may not be aware. Uh-huh. But the devil is aware that his altars will now not speak in uh-huh. Kisi. Uh-huh. They will not speak in Kenya. Amen. Because when the offering is presented there, yes. It speaks against every offering they have given against us, including offerings of human beings, uh-huh. offerings of animals, uh-huh. offerings of money. Yes. Whatever literal we present here becomes powerful uh-huh. because it is the altar that determines the impact of what comes after the offering is given. Uh-huh. You remember the, the Bible says in Matthew. 23 and verse 19. Yes. That the altar is bigger than the offering. Aha. Because it is the altar that sanctifies the offering, the offering. Meaning it converts the offering into the expectation of the giver. Mm. That is that is why it's very important. Aha. Yeah. Yes. Now that 
I have listened to your explanations right from the beginning, and there is something crucial that I've had you mention, that uh, if you connect spiritually, and you have also given an explanation of how the devil tries to fight from within, depending on the questions people ask themselves, the lack of money during the altar offering, and all those things that happen to try to resist people from giving. Are, are you explaining to us that uh, this issue of altar offering or issue of altar versus altar is not just about appearing on the altar and just placing the offering? That means it is, 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 is it something that is so spiritual that we see in the physical? In the first place, even before I answer that, yes. you, you know the worst thing that will ever happen to the devil mm -hmm. is to see a believer believing in a giving. Huh? That is the worst <laughs> that can ever happen to the devil. Because he knows then you have understood the secret of receiving. My goodness. Wow. So the only topic I know that the devil is measuring on uh -huh. is to teach people on how not to give <laughs> so that he can have a upper or a higher advantage over them uh -huh. and always overcome them because the kingdom of God mm -hmm. overcometh by giving. Yes. Amen. You know, even when God gave Jesus to die for us, uh -huh. the devil tried to resist him yes. not to be crucified. Uh -huh. Because the, the, the altar at Calvary mm. was powerful for the salvation of the nations. At Calvary, God was giving uh -huh. his own son. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the devil tried his little best to resist yes. that the giving does not take place. Yes. Yes. To the extent of trying to tell Jesus to request God <laughs> to allow that to be taken away from him. Yes. To the extent of the disciples trying to resist by cutting people's ears and all that, uh -huh. to fight against what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody that is listening to me yes. and is now not believing in giving, mm -hmm. you have actually subscribed to the teachings of demons. Uh -huh. They let you know to give, but they keep giving against you. Because they know if you give on your altar, you will defeat them. You will defeat them. Oh, that's a mystery. Yeah, so the, the devil is not concentrating on anything at the moment. Uh -huh. His concentration and measuring uh -huh. is on how will he do, what will he do so that people stop giving at all. Mm -hmm. Because this giving advances the kingdom of God yes. and empowers the giver uh -huh. to become prosperous. And then the giver become, enjoys divine earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, if anything, even, even if wherever the devil is, he knows that his major weapons are disease and poverty. Uh -huh. What else does he have to use? All the deception, <laughs> everything he does. Yes. The, uh, the objective is to plant disease and yes. sickness uh -huh. and to ensure people are poor so yes. that they can doubt God. Mm -hmm. And that is why poverty mm -hmm. among the believers. The only remedy we have to poverty among believers is the altar uh -huh. and is giving. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The grace of giving. Uh -huh. Papa, there's something I want to understand also. We have been giving this altar offering for a while. What makes the difference in this season? Every season has its celebration. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God told us this year is a year of great change. Yes. Amen. Therefore, whatever we are giving is geared towards realizing the change. Yes. So this year is a year of change. Uh -huh. Last year was a year of distinction. Uh -huh. This year is a year of change, uh -huh. according to us. So what makes the difference? Even the giving within this season, yes. like those of us who are in Kenya, and in Africa particularly, yes. mm -hmm. we know this is a time of revival. Mm -hmm. yes. And every Kenyan is aware that this is a season of revival. Uh -huh. You need to revive your altars. Mm -hmm. My God. You need to revive your giving so that you can harvest within this season. Mm -hmm. It's a season of great harvest. Mm -hmm. Harvest of souls, mm -hmm. harvest of prosperity, harvest of... Uh, social joy. Uh -huh. This is our season. Mm -hmm. So what makes the difference is that the, the giving of believers this year yes. 
is a great thing. It's not like the gilding in other times. Because uh -huh. this is a time of revival. Yes. And everything will be revived. Uh -huh. So that makes the difference. Yes. Yeah. Amen. But all you are seeing, like what is happening here, I, I want to invite the world to, to try this altar. Amen. What, what was happening here during the time of giving? That level of resistance. Yes. I mean, uh, it was at another level. Yes. But all the, all the same, we successfully gave. Uh -huh. And that means every time you are moving, you are bringing down an altar of the enemy. Amen. Another altar tries to resist you, you bring it down. Uh -huh. You overpowered all of them. And by the time you finished, you yes. were empowered. Amen. 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 Altars are different. Yes. yes. Some altars are more powerful than others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it depends on uh, which altar you are. Because yes. the, the impact of uh, what you receive or what you will receive from your giving yes. is determined by the kind of altar you gave to. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you give to a, a powerless, wrong altar, mm -hmm. uh -huh. what do you expect? <laughs> you don't expect any harvest. Uh -huh. But my encouragement is that believers should pray carefully yes. and pray in the spirit to be directed and to be connected mm -hmm. to all tasks that can transform mm -hmm. their life, yes. to all tasks that can change uh, their way of life. Yes. There is no way you can be a believer for the last 20 years and your song is that of poverty non-stop. Mm -hmm. Your song is that of disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, your altar cannot give you a testimony, not even one, for all that period of time. Uh -huh. Even if you are Job and you are Abraham waiting for a child, uh -huh. will there never come a time when that altar will respond? Because altars respond. Mm -hmm. And the notion I want to take away from most believers, yes. majority of the believers, they think, majority of believers think that they are giving is wrong. That's why they are not receiving. Mm -hmm. Do, before you punish yourself, before you make judgment upon yourself, yes. find out first, yes. is it really true that you are giving is wrong or the altar upon which you are giving it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because the most dangerous part is not what is given. Uh -huh. It's where it is given. Uh -huh. That's the most dangerous part. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I have followed you carefully. Ever since that fire came down, you went back and picked the 12 stones. You know, by, by, by carnal eyes, you might think that uh, this, this thing is what is he up to and then thereafter you building an altar still that process carnally can be seen like foolishness and then thereafter the power that came down during that giving what is this conviction that you had that it, all through this process eventually results are going to come we don't walk by sight Hallelujah. We walk by faith. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 1 17 that the just shall live by faith. Amen. I don't need to seek God and examine Him to know that He exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. My conviction mm -hmm. is that there is God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6 yes. a who comes to God must first believe mm -hmm. that God exists. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't say you must see Him. Discuss. Mm -hmm. Say you must believe. Uh -huh. Belief is to be sure without <laughs> seeing. seeing. And then you will experience the manifestation. Uh -huh. Jesus said, whatever you pray, believe that you have received it mm -hmm. and it shall be yours. Yes. So me, I am a man of faith. Amen. Amen. I walk by faith. Amen. Amen. If I'm convicted that God will do it, yes. that He exists and He will do it. Amen. That's what will happen. Amen. Amen. You know, I I have the Bible says in, in, in Hebrews 12 14, yes. uh, we, without holiness, you cannot see God. God. I have exercised that. Uh -huh. And even if I exercise, exercise the same for millions of years and I don't see him, uh -huh. I have seen him. <laughs> even by not seeing him, I'm able to experience the manifestation and to see what he does. Yes. 